360.com as well. We get right to it. An unbeaten welterweight prospect in our first bout. It'll be Mike Jones versus Jermaine Sanders. Jermaine Sanders, happy birthday to Jermaine. Always dressed well. But that birthday number is 38. Not exactly your boxing prime outside of Bernard Hopkins and George Foreman. The prospect is Mike Jones, 24 years old, 5'11", all shoulders, 12-0 with 12 knockouts. Big things expected for Mike Jones. 12-0, 12 knockouts, stepping up in classes. Really, first name win was against Pito Cardona, November of last year. That's uh, not Cardona in his prime as well, but Mike Jones ready to step up and will go against a slick veteran tonight. Referee right, fellas, is Ernie Sharif. Instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. And Teddy and Atlas has our Just for Men hair color. Stay in the fight, sir. Teddy. Any questions? Touch him up. Well, first of all, for Sanders, be alert early against Jones speed and power. The young Jones, very explosive. Make sure you're on your P's and Q's. Set up counters on the outside with your best punch. The counter left hook. And Jones, go to the body of the 38-year-old opponent to take away some of that slickness, some of that ring savvy. Mike Jones in the white trunks. Jermaine Sanders, again, 38 years old, in the, uh, how would you describe that, Teddy? It's uh, gray, uh, slacks, sort of? Yeah, I'm looking for the top. <laughs> He's well-dressed. He was dressed in, uh, you know, beautifully yesterday. Came out in a full suit as we, uh, we did our interviews. He was talking about his birthday. He was thrilled to be fighting on his birthday. And, uh, you know, early on, I think we're going to see exactly what Mike Jones has in comparison to Sanders because you have to wonder, again, this kid, Moving up, 24 years old, he could be a world-class fighter. Could be, Teddy. What are your thoughts? Well, I love his size. I love his dimensions, the body on him. And I also like his pure talent. Fast hands, good puncher, and technically sound. Knows how to go inside, outside, can counter, can go downstairs as well as upstairs. And so far in his young career, he's got a good demeanor. Calm in there, good vision. He sees things well. Right now, Jermaine Sanders is sticking the jab out nicely in the first round. He knows he's got to be busier in this fight. His last two fights, he had close losses. Well, Jones also knows something there. Because, Brian, Jones knows he's stepping up a little bit in class, so he has to look. He has to get a little bit of a feel for his opponent. Doesn't want to rush into anything. Maybe earlier in his career, he could overcome guys physically. He's stepping up with a veteran. He wants to see what he has. And Jermaine Sanders has a good win over Emmanuel Clotty. It's a nice quality win, but then two back-to-back -back losses where judges in both fights had it 7-5. So you're talking about close losses where he knows now at 38, he's got to step up. He knows he's the opponent in this case, Teddy, but one of the long-running themes of Friday Night Fights is sometimes the opponent doesn't go to plan, doesn't, no. re doesn't realize what the storyline's supposed to be. Doesn't cooperate all the time. Sanders usually, quite honestly, when he has stepped up, he has lost. The question is, is the prospect Jones a step up? I think he is. The last time that Sanders fought a tall, rangy guy like Jones, he was knocked out. That was Teddy Reed, and he was knocked out in three rounds. So not good memories physically looking across the ring at the kind of fighter that he has in front of him. Didn't do well when he was in there with Teddy Reed. Well, it is amazing when you even see these guys and you see a five foot eleven welterweight Teddy. You wonder how can he possibly be at that weight? Just a beautiful build. You know, not many welterweights are up here. Vernon Forrest, possibly up around five eleven. Even Oscar De La Hoya, just a shade below that. Former welterweight champ. You know, it gives him a lot of options too, Brian, because you know. He's still young. He's only 24. He's going to fill out. He can move up to junior middleweight. He could move up to middleweight if he has success at this division. So a lot of options for him and his connections. We're through one, and ESPN Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color and knocks out the gray better than ever. And in part by the new roundout pump and go sprayer. Hard on weeds, easy on you. We're not far from Niagara Falls. Welcome ringside, everybody. Brian Kenny, pleased to be here with Teddy Atlas. Joe Tessitore on assignment at the Florida Derby. 
He's at the Florida Derby. We come to the snow belt here, Teddy. Yes, we do. And uh, Robert Flores, by the way, will have his conversation with Floyd Mayweather, the welterweight champion of the world, coming up a little later on. So, Teddy, should be an exciting main event. Again, you have a great volume puncher in Kasim Uma against a very sturdy fighter, K-9 from the contender. A volume puncher was a former world champion and the man you just alluded to, and that's him right there in the southpaw stands, Kasim Uma, and a guy who, as you said, throws punches. In other words, TV friendly. People like to watch him. Well-rounded, more well-rounded than his opponent, and he's shown that he can win at a level, Brian, that his opponent hasn't shown yet, but his opponent, as he shows you that canine right there, he's going to want to do a little biting, and he's going to do the biting with that right hand, and that's the weapon that southpaw sometimes dread, and that's the weapon that's going to be a danger tonight for Uma. That's in our main event. Here starting things off, it's Mike Jones in the white trunks against the veteran Jermaine Sanders, round number two. Here at the Seneca Allegheny Casino and Hotel. It's a beautiful spot here in the southern tier. We did get some snow. I joke about that last night, just when you think spring has sprung. Not everywhere. <laughs> But this place is full. People are excited to get boxing here in upstate New York. Most of Sanders' 32 fights have been in his home state of Illinois. Jones was warned there briefly by Ernie Sharif, went a little low with that hook. He comes up with a wicked hook to the head, Teddy. That comes up quickly. That could be very dangerous for Jermaine Sanders. Well, dangerous combination, speed with power. And you don't always, you're not always used to seeing a tall, wiry guy like Sanders go downstairs. Or like Jones, I should say, in the white trunks, go downstairs. Good repertoire, right. Buried in his attack. Although you see Sanders again, his veteran skill, those wicked shots that come up. Sanders making the miss by just a hair. Even that right hand coming up just short. Against a, a less experienced fighter, it could be good night. Well, Sanders has really a dual responsibility tonight. He's got to survive the power and the youth of Jones early and then find ways to create offense. That was a hard right hand landed by Jones, followed up with an uppercut as he starts to land more frequently on Sanders. Sanders doesn't want to stand in front of the explosive Jones. He wants to use that ring a little bit. The question here is how long would those 38 year old legs allow him to use the ring. It's a good stiff jab by Jermaine Sanders getting back into this round and into this fight. I like what you said before though, Teddy, because you know Sanders is going to be calm in all of the experience that he's had, but Jones is calm and he does show good good vision and he's not burning himself out. Attention early in the fight, not sapping his energy. Well, that's from the 70. That didn't come from the air, Brian, because I know we're in clear air up here in Buffalo and there's some snow on the ground. It's nice and clean, but that came from 70 amateur fights. Jones has been in that ring. He's used to being in that ring. He's confident in that ring. He's a regional Golden Gloves champion. He a record of about 60 and 10, solid amateur career. And you can tell, you can tell the pedigree as he comes in. Round two, final seconds. Here at the Seneca Allegheny Casino and Resort. And Mike Jones is being tested, what we wanted to see in this fight. Friday night fights, we're through two. Brian Kenny and Teddy Atlas here ringside, south of Buffalo, New York. It's Mike Jones and Jermaine Sanders, round three of our opening bout. Main event, again, we expect a very good one. K-9, Cornelius Bundridge of the contender against former world titleist Kasim the Dream Uma. Sanders goes down there and stumbles. Of course, as we touched on before, this is a step up for Jones, but it's a step up that's calculated. It's with a 38-year-old coming off two straight losses in Sanders. Jones in the first two rounds has thrown 96 jabs, landing 20. So he's busy with the left, but again, uh, Sanders pretty slick at not taking clean shots. Knows he has to be busy. Again, when you're the opponent, the spoiler, you can fight on and on like this, and the paydays will eventually diminish. I think you mentioned last week, Teddy. See things you say stick with me. You Thank you. you I'm said, glad to see that. <laughs> glad to see you paying you, attention. You mentioned, yeah, no, you say sometimes in the studio you wonder about me, but I'm paying attention. And I said, well, I was listening to you, and you said, you know what, there's a good market out there for a good opponent. But you don't want to be that guy. You know, the, the money diminishes after a while. 
Absolutely right. I'm noticing too that Sanders in those trunks that we talked about with that unusual plaid sort of makeup there, looks like a pantsuit. He has pockets. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's very unusual. I wonder if he's got some tricks to pull out of those pockets. <laughs> you keep your wallet in there, I guess. You don't want to leave it in the dressing room. He likes to look sharp. Now he's getting hit a little more cleanly. Does have a nice jab, though. He snaps it out there. But it's going to be tough to win a jabbing war with Mike Jones. But you can win a jabbing war. Even though you're the shorter guy, you're the older guy. If you understand geometry a little bit, as Sugar Ray Robinson, the great Sugar Ray Robinson once said, little angles. You slip a little bit, you take the taller man's height away, and bang, you can hit him with the jab, you can out-jab a taller, longer guy. Jones cracking the right hand there, but again, Sanders just able to stay out of the, the danger zone. He's starting to stand in front, Sanders, more and more. There could be a price to pay for that. With Jones as the night goes on. Good uppercut there landed on Jones by Sanders. Most tall, wiry fighters like Jones in the white trunk, they usually generate power. They get good leverage on their punches. Covers up nicely there as Sanders tried in with the right hand. Another thing you've mentioned before in a previous Sanders fight. Good body shot by Mike Jones. You know, Jermaine Sanders. The way he conducts himself outside the ring is the way he conducts himself sometimes inside the ring. Cautious. He's a cautious man. Picking his spots pretty well, though. Using the ring well. Good test for a young prospect. We're through three. Back here on Friday Night Fights, round three. Mike Jones versus Jermaine Sanders. Jones is, again, 24 years old. I mentioned at the top 5'11", all shoulders against Jermaine Sanders, who's only 5'9", and who is celebrating his 38th birthday today. Take a look at Teddy's scorecard so far. Not that these rounds are so easy to score. And he, you gave Jones, well, you have Sanders up 2-1. to one. Yes, I Gave do. that last round, all right. The veteran using some of that ring savvy we talked about at the top. Surprised me a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Sanders doing a good job of keeping Jones off balance and at the same time mixing in just enough offense to stay honest, to keep Jones honest, to keep him respectful, and to stay ahead on the scorecards, at least on my scorecard. Yeah, well, again, the, the rounds are not, they're not blowout rounds. They're competitive. Good sharp jab from Jones. In the corner between rounds, Vaughn Jackson, Jones' trainer, said, all right, Mike, time to step it up. Mentioned you know, a bunch of things that he thought Jones was doing wrong, but basically now he wants things, he wants to, he wants the, uh, the cream to rise to the top. The problem with getting on Jones to step it up, good idea, but he wanted with an understanding and an attachment of still what his ring identity is. You make a guy, a young guy like Jones, who's stepping up in competition for the first test in his life, you tell him to step it up. Maybe he gives up that height. You don't want him giving up the height. You want him to step it up in his mind, and obviously with the energy in his body, but still with the identity that he does it at a certain distance. Next one, boy, not get outside of himself. Then. Absolutely, Brian. Good wicked combinations. You'll see Jones will fling, but so far, Jermaine Silky Sanders, and as a nickname he got years ago, has been able to weather these storms and stay consistent and stick that jab in Jones' face. Well, that jab, that left hand is the dominant hand for Sanders. Not a mistake. He's naturally left-handed. So here's a fighter who could be a southpaw, but he converted himself into an orthodox fighter. So you're going to see all the weaponry, most of it, from that left side with Sanders. Another good body shot by Jones. Does like to go downstairs. I mentioned in the last round, Teddy, that you had made a remark that stuck with Sanders. He, he picked up on that and said, you know, Teddy Atlas was right. I grew up in this Cabrini Green housing project in Chicago. It's a dangerous spot. He said, I'm a cautious man. I carry myself a certain way. And he carries himself that way in the ring. And he's a terrific example, once again, of how boxing saves young men. As you just said, Sanders came from a very tough area, raised by a single mom. Boxing has kept him from the streets and has allowed him to grow into not only a decent veteran fighter, but a person that you could be proud of, a person that can conduct himself in a way that you want him to. Can he keep the energy up that has kept him in this fight against a young killer, Mike Jones? Eight rounds, welterweights, Mike Jones, Jermaine Sanders. 
close round so far in this fight. Jones, the younger man, 12-0. All 12 wins by knockout. He's in the white trunks against Jermaine Sanders. You mentioned the Teddy Reed fight. Teddy in. Jermaine Sanders was 20 and 1 at that bout, and he went in against Reed, who was extremely heavy handed. Oh, yes, he was. Real knockout power, so he's not the only one to get laid out by Teddy Reed. So he's got some talent. Again, he's 38 tonight. He knows where he's at in life. But he is making quite an effort here against a young stud. Said so you gave that last round to Mike Jones. Yes, I did. Ooh, he rocked back his head with a quick hook. Sanders nailed Jones with that hook and snapped back Jones's head. Again, Sanders using a simple formula. Move a little bit, side to side, in and out. Keep the bigger, stronger, more explosive, younger. Jones off balance. And then when you have more balance, do as you just talked about. Score. Consistently scoring with that jab. You see Sanders stick it in Jones's face again. You know, a moment ago, Jones threw a couple left hooks. I noticed from a technical standpoint, did not turn him over. He slapped, he cuffed with him a little bit. Didn't turn it over clockwise, where you hit with the surface of the punch. Another sharp jab from Jones just before, and there is a little bit of redness showing on Sanders' right eye, right under his eye. Not really, if it's, it's cut more of an abrasion from all those jabs and hooks that are landing. Watch that elbow, watch that elbow. <laughs> You know, we saw Andy Lee last week, Teddy, where you had a young guy on the way up, but then you saw the, the tank go low in the later rounds. I don't think that happens with Jones here. No, but that's a good point because he goes into uncharted territory once he gets past the fifth. Jones has never been past the fifth round, so he's about to go into new territory. Now, things haven't been great for him so far tonight. They could get worse. Mentally, yep. they can get worse. He's maybe losing a fight in his mind, and all of a sudden he says, I'm losing a fight, and I'm going into a place I've never been before with a fighter that's the best I've fought so far. That won't go away. That will <laughs> not leave me alone. That can start to attack you, to attack you from the most dangerous places, from the inside, mentally. Right hand just came up short as Sanders rolled away. Jones again, all 12 wins by knockout. Five coming in the first round, so it's a good point, Teddy, where he usually gets in and against the level of competition he's faced, drills a guy and gets him out. Even Pito Cardona, who admittedly is sort of at the end of his career. A little abrasion under the right eye of Sanders. End of another spirited round. Jermaine Sanders has a seat. Again, 38 okay, years man, old to today. Okay. I asked him, all right, you're place. still fighting? What's it like to be 38? Good. Okay. I feel like I'm probably about 18. My mindset is about, my mature level is about probably 48 to 58. My spirit is about about 48 to 58 years of age. I'm, 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 I'm different ages. My, my physical is 38. But it's, it's, it's surprising, and it's a, it's a good 38. A well-groomed 38, a disciplined 38. Again, he's got miles on the Listen, odometer, he's saying. Stay but physically, busy he feels when you're good. in front of him. Stay busy, and you will never get hit. You can see him. He's tiring down now. He don't know what to do with you. Right with here, some action from the last round. We talked about the counter left hook of Sanders. You can see he does the defensive move, gets off the ropes, makes Jones miss. And then he counters. Not a picture left to effective, though. You go by the punch stats as we get into round six. In that last round, Jones landed 28 punches. That's his high round for the fight. Sanders only landing 10 shots. So, statistically, good round for Jones. Little urgency in the body language of Jones. The last two rounds coming out faster. Came out firing in this round. You know, I saw some a moment ago that could be a danger point, Brian, for Sanders. He laid his head over on his right side. You should lay that head on the left side so you're outside the right hand. You lay it on the right side, you're in the alleyway of that right hand. I'm wondering if Jones is going to pick up on that. I'll tell you, he's, he's got a long, wicked right hand, too, Teddy. That thing can reach you from a, a far distance. And there it is, exactly as we talked about. Look for that right hand, I think, of Jones to start to play a bigger part 
starting right now. Nice counter jab by Sanders there, but you see he's using his feet less and less in each round. You mentioned it earlier, Teddy, as you stand in front of a young killer like Mike Jones, you're going to take some punishment. Jones, fluid, young, strong, and calm. Calm enough now to still have his wind here in round six. We're fighting eight. And again, new territory for Jones. He's in the sixth round, first time in his career. We got Robert Flores in the studio is going to have a conversation with Floyd Mayweather, the welterweight champion of the world. It's funny, I asked Jones yesterday, who do you like in the welterweight division? You know, do you watch guys think about future opponents? He said, look, everybody's got flaws. And then he stopped, thought about it, and he said, well, Floyd, I don't see any flaws, but everybody else, they've got flaws. So, I, so right now, Mike Jones doesn't want a piece of uh, Floyd Mayweather. But by the time Jones gets up, Floyd might be, I don't know, full-time on WWE or something like that, Teddy. Who knows? Never know. <laughs> He's got a lot of uh, entertainment things going in his A lot his of mind. irons in the fire. Yeah, that's right. Good for him. He's getting paid well this weekend. We'll talk about that. Right now, the left hand is starting to pay off a little bit. Talking about paydays, starting to pay off for Jones. And there's that right hand we talked about. And there's the counter hook right back by Sanders. You see both prime weapons, and now that wakes up Sanders. He's going to try to answer immediately. Well, Jones got caught because he admired his work. The old timers would tell you, Brian, don't take a picture when you're done. He took a picture, and he's seeing flash bulbs right now. Jones is trying to weather this storm. Sanders sees an opportunity after getting caught with a clean shot. Came back with a hook and roughhoused Jones on the ropes. This is his chance. Final seconds of the round, though, have to make it happen now. And again, that abrasion under the right eye of Sanders getting a little worse. An excellent test for a young prospect, Jermaine Sanders, making a big stand. Action from the action from the last round. I talked about Sanders laying on the right side and being open for the right hand. He lays on the right side, hits with the right hand, but he comes right back with a counter left hook. The veteran behaved the right way there, Brian. He got caught a little bit with the right hand. He rolled with it pretty well, but he did not get upset by it. He came right back with the counter hook and caught Jones admiring his work a little bit. All that experience for Sanders as we're in round seven, so only two rounds to go. And in Jones's corner, his people were telling him, look, this fight's not won yet. You can win this with your jab, but you got to win it. Let's step it up. I think he's winning these rounds, Teddy, but a lot of them are close. You never know how each round can be judged. Teddy's scorecard, let's take a look and see where Teddy has it right now. He gave that last round. You like Sanders and the way influenced maybe by the way he got roughed up well, on the ropes, Teddy? Well, what I like, I had Jones quite honestly ahead in that round, but Sanders, this is professional boxing. It's about who lands the cleaner, most effective punches. That was the most effective punch of the round. That left hook, cleaner than the right hand by Jones. And then he jumped on his man, and I thought that he captured that round. You know, he, you have to admire him, too, the way he pounced on Jones, looking to stop him, because he knows, look, this could just become another third straight loss. And anybody watching this fight, Teddy, knows, oh, no, this guy really gave a great effort. But when you look on the record, it could be just an L, and a third straight L. Another stiff jab from Sanders. The other way of looking at it, if you're one of Mike Jones's people, you got to like this type of test. It's a good test. It's a development fight, a fight that will allow you to be prepared to climb that ladder, that boxing ladder. Brian Kenny, Teddy Atlas, here ringside with you. Jermaine Sanders, seat 27 and 5. That's two straight losses, close losses, though, on the scorecards. And Mike Jones, 12 wins, all 12 by knockout. We mentioned deep waters now for Mike Jones, although he looks sharp, still looks like he's got plenty of energy. But he normally knocks guys out very quickly. Well, normally he's not in there with a veteran like he is tonight. As we said earlier, stepping up in class tonight is Jones. You know, Sanders starting to stand in front. We said this several rounds ago. How long could he use those 38-year-old wheels? Starting to stand a little bit more than I think he would like to in front of Jones. But Jones has a little kick in his armor, Brian. Every once in a while, 
He will disconnect his offense for defense. He'll do that. He doesn't know how to mix the two together. He'll just stop right in front, cover up, and allow the opponent to get off a little bit. He's got to learn how to intertwine both, how to be able to mix offense with defense without losing that offensive command or flow. Final seconds of the seventh round. It's been interesting, and we'll have one more. See if the birthday boy can pull it out. Friday night fights. We're at the Seneca Allegheny Casino and Hotel in the southern tier of upstate New York. Brian Kenny and Teddy Atlas here. Final round of a very good first fight. Mike Jones, the prospect against the 38 years old today, and Jermaine Sanders. So we see some action in the early seconds. Jones has outlanded Sanders 92 to 41 in the last three rounds. Teddy Atlas gave the seventh to Mike Jones, but you see when you add him up, and this is the way the judges do it, you hand it in at the end of the round, you, and you don't think about your overall score. It's a one-point fight. It could be that close. <laughs> Veteran New York State judges in this one as well, Teddy. Julie Letterman, Steve Weisfeld, Eddie Scuncio. Scuncio, actually a newcomer. I think he's going to do a good job. Just began judging recently. Trading shots now as Sanders stays in. I believe Sanders, I mean, he's got to know. I think his corner believes, at the very least, he's got to stop Jones or at least put him down in order to win this fight. They were singing happy birthday to him in the corner and then saying, take this guy out. Let's do it. Definitely his birthday. I don't know if it's going to be a happy one. We're going to find out. <laughs> got a lot to be proud of. Yes, he does. Don't and again, one thing that changed a little while ago, about three rounds ago, when I mentioned it, is Sanders started laying that head on the right side, and he's eaten a few right hands for that effort. You know, you notice something here, Brian? No break in the action. Good job by the referee. Right. You know, control things, but didn't get in there and go places he shouldn't. And also, you didn't see any adhesive tape becoming loose, did you? And there's a reason for that. A lot of times you hear me talk on the air about how they should put electrical tape, the commission should, over the white tape so when the water starts getting there, it doesn't become loose and all of a sudden impact the fight, stop the action. Well, there's a guy named David Price, and he came up with a cold glove. It's a blue sort of vinyl leather that, I don't know if you can see it, but it is covering the laces of the gloves and the tape. And it's made sure that we have not had any breaks in action. So they were listening when I was complaining. Hard right hands by Jones. He has Sanders in trouble. As Jones really starts to dig in with those shots. I don't think he's in trouble, to be honest with you. I think that he's taking control of the pace and the flow of the fight. Jones but, Sanders, yeah. yeah, but Sanders not in trouble. He's taking some hard shots. Nah, he looks fine to me, to be honest with you. He's a fighter. This is what he does. He's in there. He doesn't uh, make hat for a living. <laughs> he trades leather. <laughs> this ain't playing the piano? No, this is not playing the piano. That's right. Sanders has been in there all night. A spirited fight on his 38th birthday. Will it be enough, though, against Mike Jones? We're going to find out on the scorecards. Good fight. Good action fight for Mike Jones and Jermaine Sanders. Our first fight in the books. We've got a great main event on the way, but we'll go to the scorecards here in upstate New York after this. Back here at the Seneca Allegheny Casino and Hotel, there's Jermaine Sanders. Telling people it's his birthday. Big hug for Mike Jones. Good test for Mike Jones. Teddy, uh, again, a lot of these rounds were close, although Jones was crisp early on. Yeah, that energy, that youth was working early, but then the old experience of Sanders showed his hand a little bit with that counter hook before, but all of a sudden, the right hands of Jones started finding their mark a little bit. And quite honestly, at the end, Brian, he just stepped up the pace, and youth may have beaten experience. We'll find out. Go to the Just For Men Hair Color Punch Track Fight Recap, and you see it is Mike Jones outlanding Jermaine Sanders by a 2-1 to one margin. Jabs 94-51. to 51. Very busy with that jab, although Sanders' jab was quite effective. Teddy, let's talk about your scorecard. Let's see what you had. Oh, I had it. You had a one-point fight going into the final round. In that last round, you gave it to Mike Jones. 
Did you give it to Mike Jones? Well, we went seven. Obviously, they didn't finish the scoring there. <laughs> Where did you uh, finish it? Those things happened, but I finished it 77 to 75 for Mr. Jones. He stays undefeated, if I'm correct. All right, let's find out what the official judges had. Let's go to ring announcer Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Julie Letterman, Steve Weisbell, and Eddie Scunzio all scored about exactly the same at 78 to 74 for the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Mike Jones. If I had it a little close, obviously, I thought Jones, as I said, his youth and his determination to keep that zero won it for him. A first time Jones has had to listen to the judges' scorecards, but it goes six rounds to two in his favor. Happy birthday to Jermaine Sanders either way. Outstanding effort at the age of 38. Mike Jones remains undefeated.